Hey, what's cracking everybody? For today's video, I'm gonna be taking a look at OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is the uh, ISO I downloaded. So if you click on the desktop OS, it'll take you to their page and you have two options right here. You have Leap and you have Tumbleweed. So the version that I've downloaded is the Tumbleweed version. All right, so uh, I got it up in a virtual machine and we'll take a look at the installer, get it installed and see how it look and feels. All right, I'm not sure what desktop I got or anything like that because uh, I downloaded it like, uh, I don't know, maybe a week ago. So I can't remember what all it was, but uh, I do have it up in the virtual machine. So let's head on over there and uh, get it installed. I will have this link down in the video description. That way, if you want to open up the link and uh, do a read through on all this, you can. So let's head on over to the virtual machine and take a look at OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Okay, we're here on the virtual machine now. When you boot up the ISO, you can boot up to the live desktop and then it has an install option. And then there's, you know, your other boot options. So I chose the install option. So when the ISO booted up, it did these three steps right here that have check marks automatically. So that's the network auto setup, installer updates, and repositories initialization. So now we're on the welcome screen and this is the welcome screen right here. And it does have a license agreement. So uh, let me scroll through this. Uh, doesn't look like I have to check anything, So, uh, but there is a license agreement. And right here, of course, this is our uh, keyboard layout. So English, US, I'll go ahead and I'll click next. All right, so now it's going through. It does a, a few of these automatically. So right now it's asking, uh, Let's see, online repositories. Enabling the online repositories during installation gives you access to all softwares that does not fit on the installation media anymore. Additionally, those repositories might contain update software packages. Activate online repositories now. Yes. Okay, so it's gonna do that now. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave the default ones that are checked. I'm just gonna leave those. I'm not gonna mess with the other ones. I'm not going to mess with the other ones, so I'll just click on next. Okay, so right now it's a writing list of online repositories. Okay, so I guess here we can actually uh, select what desktop it is that we want to use. So we have desktop with KDE Plasma, desktop with GNOME, desktop with XFCE, generic desktop, or server. So... We always take it. We, we've been looking at KDE for like uh, the past two weeks. There's been a lot of systems for KDE and no um, XFCE hasn't been getting much love. So let's do XFCE. All right. Then I'll click on next. All right. So suggestion partitioning. Initial layout proposed with the default guided setup settings. All right. So I could just go with the guided setup, click on next. Okay, now I gotta select my time zone. Pacific Los Angeles, that is correct. Click on next. Now I'm gonna enter some user info. This user is just gonna be test and the password is gonna be strong and complicated and it's not one too. All right, use this password for system administrator and automatic login. These are actually automatically checked. Of course, I'm just gonna leave them. Okay, the password is way too simple. It is way too short. You have used only digits for the password. The password should have at least, really wanna use this password? Of course not, but we're gonna go for it. Remember, give yourself always a strong and complicated password. Okay, so uh, right now we're on the installation overview. It's telling us everything that's gonna happen during the installation. And next is gonna be the install. And right here, confirm installation, install. Okay, so right now it should just be doing the installation. So at this point, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll pause the video. And when we come back, we should be booted into OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And I did select the uh, XFCE desktop environment. So we'll take a look at that once we come back. So I'll go ahead and I'll pause the video now. 
And the installer completed and it auto rebooted on its own. So I did not have to click on anything. It just uh, auto rebooted. All right, and we are welcomed by a welcome screen. Ahoy, this is OpenSUSE. And you have your basics. You got your readme, documentation, get software. Then you got support, XFCE help, contribute. And you can build OpenSUSE. Cool. I'm not the only one out there building stuff. And then you can help by donating. donating. So you can, uh, you know, give these guys a helping hand. If this is your first time using OpenSUSE, we would like you to feel right at home in your new voyage. Take your time to familiarize yourself with all the buttons and let us know how you like the experience on our social media. So there's, you can either close this or you can customize. So let's go to customize. Let's see desktop layouts. You got uh, Redmond, Cupertino, El Raton, and in it in in it All right, and then themes. You got your light themes on this side, and you got your dark themes on the right side. So light themes on the left, dark themes on the right. So it looks like you just have these basic themes. Uh, let me open up a folder and see what it's set up to right now. It looks like it's set up to the uh, light theme. So let's hit it with a dark theme. So I did hit it with a dark theme. Uh, maybe I have to close this file manager and then reopen it. Huh? I don't know if it actually went through. Let's try it again. Now I'm using the Edwida. Okay, that made it to a dark theme. So, all right, we'll stick with that. And I can go back to the home. And right here is the same uh, welcome screen that we saw. And you can get software. So uh, I guess we can look at that. But before, uh, let's talk about the desktop environment. It is the uh, XFCE desktop environment. And it's a traditional layout. You got your panel on the bottom. You got your system tray on the right. And then you got your uh, applications menu on the left. All right. And then on the applications menu, you do have your favorites, recently used, all applications, accessories, graphics, internet, multimedia, office, settings, system, and YAST. I'm not sure what YAST is. There's a lot of YAST in here. All right, but uh. Eh. Pretty much, uh, let's see, on the graphics, you do have a document scanner, document viewer, and an uh, image viewer. Uh, under internet, you got Firefox, Mail Reader, and on the multimedia, you have Parole Media Player and Praga. And you also have your volume control in here. And under Office, you do have Dictionary and Document Viewer. So pretty much, you got your basics to get started for everything. And you do have a search menu and a control panel right here. So on uh, XFCE, the control panel is uh, pretty simple and laid out, you know, accordingly. You got all your options right here. So you got your personalization, your hardware, and your system. So basically, uh, if you want to change something on here, for example, appearance, you can click on appearance. And right now we're set to uh, at white or dark. I was trying to get the gray bird dark, but let's try to see what happens. I clicked on it. Let me open uh, all right, it does work through here, so, okay. And then under, under icons, you either have high contrast or I do it all. All right, so uh, that's pretty much XFCE in a nutshell. It's a very light uh, desktop environment, but you can uh, download other themes and theme it, you know. You can make it look as advanced as any other desktop. It's just a matter of setting it all up. All right, but right here, uh, let's see. We don't have any uh, pinned applications. We just have our welcome. And there was a shadow effect right here for settings, but that's already been closed. All right, so let's uh, check out Get Software. So I'll click on this. I can't remember when's the last time I used uh, OpenSUSE. I know I have used it before, but uh, it's been a while. So let's see, software. I guess uh, it opened up a web browser. So let's see, for example, let's get GIMP. So I clicked on GIMP, or well, at least I'm searching for GIMP, 
And it says right here, extra files for GIMP, GIMP, Vala, Lib, GIMP. I mean, there's a lot of GIMP on here, but I just want to GIMP. There is a button that says right here, all distributions. And I want open source tumbleweed. Let's see if that changes anything. Okay, it does. So it does have a sub package menu. But uh, let's see, software, open source, org, package, GIMP. Let's click on this. All right, and AppStream install or expert install. I'm not an expert, so let's try AppStream install. See what what's happening. Is anything happening? Let me click on it again. I don't see anything happening, so I'm not sure if it's installing in the background or not. But uh, all right, let me click on expert install. See or expert download. See what happens. I'll just do standard. Okay. I don't think that actually downloaded. It says add repository and install manually or grab binary package directly. Okay. And these are the RPMs. You know what? There's got to be an easier way to install software. This seems like it's very difficult. So let me close this and let me close this. So let me click on software or let me not click but search. Okay, so Yast software. Let's see if this does anything. It does say right here, install, remove software. So I'll click on this, give it my complicated password. That's not one too. Okay, this looks like a more uh, traditional, uh, you know, installation manager. Oh, excuse me. Let me search for GIMP. All right. So I check the GIMP. And let me see, right clicking, install. Did it do anything? I guess I got to click accept down here. Uh, continue. It looks kind of similar to a Synaptic on a Debian, but uh, it's installing, so looks like this is going to do the business that we need it to do. I don't know why the welcome screen would put that uh, that other method to install because it, it seemed uh, kind of, uh, do I click on continue or finish? Oh, I guess continues to see uh, if there's something else we want to install. Let's do H top just for the head of it. There we go. H top, accept, continue. And now it's installing H top. All right, and we're pretty much finished. So that was YAST. YAST, which is down here, is going to be your. Uh, well, there's a lot of YAST programs, but at least the YAST installer is the one that you use for uh, installing packages. You know, these uh, systems should make it easier for uh, finding these uh, installation packages. But then again, right here, you just type in software and it opens up for you. Okay, so uh, I did install GIMP, and that's under graphics. And let's see what version it does install. It does install version 3. I'm assuming it's going to be 3.0.4, but uh, we'll see right now. I'm not sure if uh, OpenSUSE does uh, bleeding edge uh, software. And it is 3.0.4, so looks like it does. All right. And let's open up a terminal so we can take a look at HTOP since I did uh, install HTOP. All right. And for our memory usage, it's only using about 850 gigabytes. It's not even touching a swap, and the load averages are very low. So all together, not shabby, not too shabby. It's working good. All right, well, this is a open source tumbleweed. Uh, it's been a long time since I looked at a open source system, and uh, you know everything's snappy, everything's working pretty good. So uh, yeah, 
I think it's fine. It has been around for a while. So open source is not a new distribution. It's something that's been around for a while. It is its own separate distribution. It's not a Arch base. It's not a Ubuntu base. Uh, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, enterprise based or not, but uh, it kind of looks and feels like it's enterprise based, but it, it, it also feels like it's its own independent uh, base system. And I'm pretty sure it is, but you can always open up the uh, OpenSUSE website, read through it. I'm pretty sure it'll give you all the information you need. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you like the video, please uh, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, by all means, give it a thumbs down. And that's going to do it for OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And I'm out. Thank you.